Hey guys. So let's talk about the six lessons or the six things I've learned after being on Instagram for six years. Now, if this is the first time you are watching one of my videos, I'm just going to give you a little backstory to give you some context. So when I was in college, I was studying business management and entrepreneurship. And my plan was to transfer my credits to a university in France where I would complete my degree in fashion design. Now, while I was studying business management and entrepreneurship, I realized that I could start a business in fashion without actually going to fashion school. So yeah, while I was still in college, I launched my first business, an online store where I sold women's clothing and accessories, and that was in 2014. Now, back then, I was very naive, like most people are when they first start a business. I thought I was going to become rich. I was going to be this massive success in no time. I thought social media was so easy. All I had to do was create a Facebook page and post on Instagram and the customers would come. But I quickly realized that that was not true. So in this video, I want to share six things that I've learned about Instagram and social media you know, when it really comes to promoting a business online, these are the things that I learned throughout my journey. So thing number one is that people are superficial. Now, I'm sure all of us would love to think that, you know, we're amazing people, we're good people, we don't really judge books by their covers, but Instagram is actually proof that all of us are shallow and we do judge books by their covers because on Instagram there are like there's so many people who I know personally who share such amazing content um, and I don't mean like beautiful pictures and stuff like that I mean in terms of information like people share such amazing tips but because their pictures or their actual content doesn't look to a certain standard that we're all accustomed to now on Instagram, they don't have a lot of followers. And then you have people who have fabulous pictures um, and they don't talk about anything. Their captions are literally emojis and Drake quotes from his songs and they have thousands of followers. Now, as a business owner, this used to really upset me about Instagram, but I realized, listen, this is the platform. This is the name of the game. Instagram is a visual platform. It's all about how things look and people go on Instagram to be inspired. So why not use that to your advantage? So if you want your business to stand out on Instagram, just let me see, what did I put in my notes? Um, yeah, if you want your business to stand out on Instagram or rise above the noise, like I, I, I like to say, then you have to play the game. You have to invest in having quality content that may mean hiring a photographer or learning how to take better photos with your phone. That may mean paying models. That may mean going to pretty locations and taking your pictures. That may mean paying for Canva Pro. That may mean learning how to do graphic design or hiring a graphic designer. Remember, this is for business. So I'm not talking to people who are using Instagram for personal reasons, but if you have a business, you have to invest in the marketing of that business. Like you have to invest in having good content for that business because customers are going to judge you. People are going to judge you. So aside from people judging your photos on Instagram, your feed, people also judge you based on how many followers you have. Now, people always ask me, how come you don't have like thousands of followers on Instagram? And people usually ask me this after they get to know me or after they work with me on like a marketing project or something. 
And people are like, you're really smart. You should have a lot more followers. Your content are really, really good. Your content is really, really good, sorry. You should have thousands of followers. So why don't you have thousands of followers? Um, the point is, people judge you based on your followers, right? So there are people who have told me that they were hesitant to work with me because I did not have like 10,000 followers or 50,000 followers or 100,000 followers, but they were recommended to me by somebody else. And after working with me, they now feel like I am an expert in whatever it is they hired me for, right? Um, but all this to say, people are judging you based on your feed, they are judging you based on your followers, and not so much on the value that you bring to the table, which is a tough pill to swallow. Because you could be the smartest, most knowledgeable, most educated person in your industry, but if you don't have the pretty pictures or at least quality looking content, nobody is going to ever notice you. They're not going to find you. You're not going to stand out. And then people are not going to look into your feed and read your captions and actually see all of the value that you have there. So that's one of the things that I've learned about Instagram. People are superficial. But as a business owner, you just have to understand that and don't get mad about it, but play the game. So if people care about pictures, how good things look, give them things that look good. Right? right now on Instagram, a lot of graphic designers, they're blowing up because they're doing these really pretty carousels and they're getting like 60,000 followers a month and things like that. These people know design. Like if I knew design, like if I could use Adobe Illustrator and all of these things to create my Instagram content, like I would be killing it. But I use Canva. <laughs> so do millions of other people. And I'm not a graphic designer. Like I didn't go to school to study graphic design. Um, but these graphic designers are killing it right now on Instagram because their things look really, really good, right? So as a business owner, just make sure that your things look really good too. And yeah, people do care about that follower count, but we'll talk about that more as we get into the video, right? So my point number two, or my lesson number two that I learned, um, after being on Instagram for six years is that you are truly in competition with no one when you're building a personal brand. Now, there's so many businesses to date, like their consumers have so many options, right? In any industry you can think of, let's, let's use me for an example, like in the fashion industry, there's so many people who have brands, who have t-shirt brands, who have boutiques who have online stores right and we're all basically selling the same products because we're all buying from the same wholesalers we're all following the same fashion trends and things like that right so consumers have a lot of options and competition is fierce but what i've learned is that competition becomes a non-factor when you're building a personal brand so for example if you own an online store right and there are 10 other people who own online stores on instagram in your country as well and you're all selling the same products the same clothing the same handbags and everything what is going to make you stand out from everybody else is the fact that you add your own personal style to those items that you're actually selling is the fact that you might take pictures in a different location or you might give people tips or you are the face of the brand right because a personal brand is brand you right so what separates you from other people really it's you it's the person behind the brand it's your values and what your brand you know the values your personal values what you put into your brand values, right? Because a little bit of your brand values are going to come from who you are as a person, right? So no one can really compete with you because there's nobody else like you, right? People can sell the same products. They can hire the same photographers. They can go to the same locations. 
yeah, they could probably share the same tips, right? So I'm kind of backtracking on what I said before because I was, I don't know. Ugh, all right, get it together, Jalisa. So yeah, people could have the same products, have the same photographer and all that stuff, but they cannot replicate who you are as a person. You know what I mean? They can't copy and paste you. And I find that that's what customers gravitate towards. They gravitate to the person behind the brand. They gravitate to personal brands that show their human side, that are run by people they actually know. Like people can't connect with a logo, right? And most online stores, the owners are still hiding behind a logo. The owners are still hiding behind um, influencers and models that they hire to promote the brand. But as a business owner, the best person to talk about your brand, the best person to be your brand ambassador is you because no one knows more about your business than you, right? So that's thing number two that I learned um, about Instagram and it really changed the game for me because when I first launched my business, I was really, I wouldn't say hiding behind the logo, but I wasn't as focused on the personal brand element of like showing who I was, you know, as the owner of this business. Um, I was more like pushing the clothes and when I started just incorporating who I was into the brand and my style and stuff like that, I noticed a huge difference in my engagement in my sales, which is why we're all in business to make that ching ching. Um, yeah, so personal branding is the key on Instagram, guys. So the third thing that I've learned about Instagram thus far, after six years of being on Instagram, is what I said before in point one. Now, I would have said that people come on Instagram to be inspired. Now, I want you to think about every other social media platform out there, right? We're going to go through each of them and we're really going to talk about what each of them are about, like why people go on that platform. So right now you guys are on YouTube. People usually come on YouTube if they want to be entertained or if they want to learn something. So I'm not sure if you guys have ever heard this term, but... Um, people talk about YouTube University and that basically means if you want to know how to do anything go on YouTube and you'll definitely find millions of videos of people teaching you or showing you how to do that thing. So when you want to learn something you come on YouTube, right? Or if you want to listen to music, um, watch music videos, you come on YouTube, right? Um, if you want to be entertained, like if you're bored and you want to pass the time, you go on TikTok right? You'll get a really good laugh. If you want to just discover new things, you might go on Pinterest. Pinterest is the home of discovery. It's like going down a rabbit hole. As soon as you land on your Pinterest home feed, they just show you so many things that they know you'll be interested in. It's kind of, it's so crazy how Pinterest knows what to show you. And before you know it, you're looking how to embroider um, a t-shirt, right? Um, if you want to listen to breaking news or you want to know what's happening in the culture and the world around you, you might go to Twitter before you actually go to CNN, right? Because Twitter is a place of discussion, it's a place of breaking news um, and things like that. But when it comes to Instagram, Instagram is the place of inspiration. Instagram is where people go to be inspired. Now, let me give you some examples. If you follow fashion bloggers on Instagram, right? The reason you're following those fashion bloggers is to get inspiration from them on how to style your own outfits or what to buy this season. If you follow food bloggers, it's the same thing with food. Whoever you're following on Instagram, you're doing that like brand wise, the brands and businesses that you follow on Instagram or the public figures you follow on Instagram is because those people provide a sort of inspiration for you, right? Personally, I follow a lot of travel bloggers because I love to see all of the amazing 
locations these girls are going to and I'm like damn this is so beautiful when I go to Egypt I'm gonna take a picture like that or when I go to Bali I'm gonna go to that restaurant so Instagram is the home of inspiration so what that means for you guys who own businesses is that you have to make sure that your content is inspiring your followers let me just check to see if this thing is still on yeah all right so let's go to the next thing that i've learned thing number four now i would have mentioned followers before um and here's the thing right i said people judge you based on how many followers you have but what i've learned is that followers only matter if you're trying to be an influencer right um, and they also only matter based on the type of business you have and who you're selling to. So if you're selling clothes, if you're selling, let me think, if you're selling clothes, if you're selling um, beauty products, eyelashes, makeup, anything beauty related, so beauty and fashion related, the amount of followers you have will matter if you're selling, um, what's the word? If you're selling like um, trendy pieces, right? Or trendy things. But if you're selling one of a kind, if you're an indie designer, like you actually made these clothes yourself, then the amount of followers you have don't matter because it means that your customers are going to be people who want to buy one of a kind things or things that nobody else has. They don't want to be wearing what other people could buy on Fashion Nova, right? Um, so followers matter based on like the industry you're in, what you're selling and who your customers are and what matters to them. Um, let's see what else I have here in my notes because I don't want to forget. I want to give you guys all of the goods in this video, right? So if you're building a personal brand, for example, like if you're selling some type of service, like you're a coach um, or you're a tutor or something like that, like you're teaching people English or you're teaching people Spanish or things like that, the amount of followers you have don't matter. But what matters is who follows you. So I've learned that it's more important who is following you or the type of people that are following you um, rather than how many people are following you. Because like I was saying earlier, even though people may judge me based on how many followers I have for my marketing consultancy, um, that doesn't really matter a whole lot because people refer me to other people right so i'm getting clients through referrals and people trust referrals more than they trust you know if they find a brand on their own through instagram and you know they have to assess that person for themselves like they kind of trust somebody who says no this girl is legit or this person is legit you should take their course or you should hire that person um so it doesn't really matter a whole lot right now, but in the future, I mean, I definitely want to move away from one-on-one -on -one work with clients and do things on a bigger scale. Like I want to have my course that people can purchase anytime. I want to have my books on Amazon and things like that. Um, so when I get to that point, then the amount of followers I have is definitely going to matter because I'm not going to be working with people on a one-on-one -on -one basis. I'm going to be not working with people at all. I'm going to be selling a product that many people, many people are going to buy. And so the more people you have in your audience, the more people you can sell to, the more people are going to convert, right? So that's that. Followers only matter unless they matter. <laughs> um, Thing number five that I learned about being on Instagram, or I learned about business after being on Instagram for six years, is that the best influencers aren't influencers, right? So let me give you an example. So for my clothing store, 
I remember I would send free clothes to influencers and they would wear it, they would post about it, they would mention me on Instagram and I would get a few followers, like I would get a lot of followers, not a few followers, and I got a lot of followers but no sales, right? And then I was like, okay, how about if I send it to someone who's not an influencer, like this person is not marketing themselves as, as an influencer, but they have, really, they have a really good fashion sense. You know what I mean? So I sent it to a girl who was just a regular girl. She wasn't like a public figure. There was nothing in her bio about contacts or anything, but she had a few thousand followers and she dressed really nicely. So I sent her something from my store and the minute she posted about it, that thing that she wore sold out, right? So I realized that not every influencer out there is influential or the right fit for your business. With that being said, an influencer's job is not to bring you sales. An influencer's job is to give you access to their audience. And I guess this should be something else that I, I should include as well, but I was included in this point. Um, influencers don't bring you sales. That, like, that's not their job. Your job is to get sales for yourself. An influencer is going to give you access to their audience, right? So they are going to bring you followers. But once you get those followers, it's up to you to turn those people into customers. Um, but sometimes when you work with the right person, they can bring you followers and customers. So it's all about finding the right fit for you and don't look at Every popular person on Instagram as someone who your brand should work with should definitely, you know they say micro-influencers, but I don't even like the term micro-influencers because I feel like that's still people who are creating as influencers. You should look for regular guys and girls relevant to your brand who are um, posting really good content. Um, oh God. <laughs> who are posting really good content that is relevant to your business and you reach out to them and you work with them. I, I guarantee you guys, you will get better results if you work with more non-influencers than actual influencers. Great. So that's influencers. Now, lesson number six that I learned after being on Instagram for six years is that if you don't know your customers thoroughly, then nothing you do on Instagram is going to work. Your ads are not going to work. The type of content you post is not going to be in alignment. Your stories are not going to work. Like no type of hack or tr trick is going to work until you get in your customers' shoes and understand who these people are understand their challenges and understand their buying motivations. Now, the best way to start off doing this is to create a customer profile or a buyer persona of your customers. There's so many resources. You can literally Google how to create a customer profile or buyer persona, or you guys can download my buyer persona workbook. It's only $9.99 available on Etsy. It's a digital download, you get it instantly. I have so many questions in that workbook that is gonna help guide you through, um, you know, to realizing who your customers are and what their motivations are. But not only that, in that workbook as well, you're gonna then be able to say, okay, these are who my customers are, this is what they're struggling with, this is what is gonna motivate them to buy. And then it's going to help you come up with the content that you need to attract these people, right? So it's a really great resource. You can check it out or you can go on Google and read four or five blog posts on how to create a bio persona. But if you don't know who your customers are, like nothing you do on Instagram is going to work. And a lot of the reasons why, or the number one reason why I should say, most people feel like, I don't know what to post. I don't know what to talk about on Instagram is because they don't know who they're talking to. If you don't know who you're talking to or who is going to buy your stuff or who's going to benefit the most from your product, then heck yeah, you're definitely not going to know what 
type of content to post. So guys, those were my six things that I learned on Instagram after using it for business for six years. Um, I hope you liked this video and you found it helpful. If you did, definitely consider following me on Instagram at Jalisa John Company. I share a lot of great marketing tips. Um, and yeah, leave a comment, thumbs up this video and all the other things those YouTubers tell you guys to do for the algorithm and all that stuff. I appreciate it and I'll see you in my next one.